In one corner, we got physical games. In the other corner, we got digital games. There we go. Let's put them head to head as we, together, as a people, tech it out. And welcome to Mike Text It Out, a channel where I talk about things around the house, except for on Sundays where I do the tech news. But that's not important right now. What's important is we're going to break down the differences between physical and digital games. There are some misconceptions going on out there based off of what I've seen from some comments from a couple of videos of mine. The main one being the one where I told the story about how I bought a digital PS5 from GameStop and then a GameStop employee kind of discouraged me about buying it and told me a bunch of stuff about digital games that wasn't true. I feel like based on the comments, there were like some common themes that I saw that weren't really 100% true. Number one is that physical games save space on your SSD or hard drive and are somehow better for your SSD or hard drive. That second one, someone actually posted that, like a comment. I think that's what they were trying to say in the comment, but yeah, it's not, not true at all. Basically, when you install the game, whether it's from a disc or from the internet, you're installing the game, it's gonna be the same size, no matter what. Now, the one exception is the Switch. I should have mentioned this earlier in the video, but the Switch, I'm gonna have to throw in those exceptions because the Switch is a different system. And you know what? The Switch is all high and mighty. It's like, oh, I sold over 100 million, so you have to mention me, fine. Now, a lot of Switch games actually do run off of the cartridge, so you can save space memory-wise, with a few exceptions like Final Fantasy, 10 2. So there are a few exceptions, but for the most part, you can actually save space if you buy physical games for the Switch. Number two, digital games never go on sale. This is not true. Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo all run sales weekly, in fact, on their shops. Plus, they have like the big summer and spring sales and winter sales. There's pretty much always sales year round on both physical and digital games. And usually, if both a physical and digital game are on sale, they're the same price. There's more nuance to it, which I'll go over later. But from a general standpoint, saying that digital games never go on sale, there are no good deals for digital games is not really true. And last but not least, disc-based games will save you from digital doom. And the truth is, buying physical games is not gonna save you from a future where Xbox Live or Microsoft servers or Sony servers go offline and not hosting that content anymore. Even if you have a physical copy, like yes, the advantage is you will be able to install it, but the version of the game that's on the disc in a lot of cases is not gonna be the complete version of the game because discs have to be pressed ahead of time so the game can ship out when the game releases. So a lot of the times they're still working on the game as they're pressing the disc, which means that the complete version of the game is not on the disc, which is why like 99.9% .9 of games now have a day one patch because it's actually finishing the game. It's doing those last little finishing touches. Would you want to play the version of No Man's Sky that shipped on the disc or Cyberpunk for that matter? Probably not. It's not going to be an experience that you want to play. So no, having a disc is not going to save you from a future where all those services go down unless you just happen to have all these games installed anyway, which at that point it wouldn't really make a difference if it was a digital version or the physical version. That's not gonna save you from digital doom. Now that we've gotten past that, let's break down the advantages of both, starting with digital. One advantage of digital games is you can preload. So if it is a game that you pre-order, you can always preload the game. A lot of times you'll still have to download that day one patch, but at least you saved a lot of time by pre-downloading the game. To go along with that, you get earlier releases, so you don't have to worry about going to the store to pick up a game. If the game comes out at 12 a.m., if you're awake, like me, I mean, I'm shooting this at like three o'clock in the morning, you can always just start playing the game right then after you download the day one patch. The other thing, of course, is saving physical space. Some people are collectors, so this might be a disadvantage to some people. I don't like collecting games, really. So I'd rather personally save the space, and you do save space by not having a large game collection, especially if it's digital. And I'm talking about physical space, because again, you're not gonna save disk space except for on the Switch, because the Switch always has to be special. Of course, along with that, you can just play your whole library from your system. I mean, if it's a game you haven't played in a while, you might have to still update it before you can play it, but you don't have to hunt around for a disk. It just takes one extra step out. And all the disk basically does is just authenticate that you own the game. You're not actually playing the game from the disk anyway. The digital copy just says, hey, I own this game. There's a digital key saying that I own it, and they'll launch it. Also, for digital games, there are certain games that just are digital only, or if they do get a physical release, especially if it's from a smaller studio, it might be a lot later, like a year or two later, after the game gets popular, 
Because for a lot of smaller studios, it's just cheaper to do a digital game and not really worry about having that physical shelf space and having to press those discs. So there are certain games that are just going to be digital only. Another thing that's a plus for digital games is game sharing. And I'm talking about specifically on the Nintendo Switch. See, I didn't leave y'all out. I brought y'all up have a whole Switch part in the digital games. So the reason I like game sharing on the Switch is because it's one of those systems where I feel like if someone's likely to have more than one, it's probably gonna be the Switch. And the way that I do it is my primary Switch is actually not my Switch, it's my husband's Switch. So buy the game on my account, my Switch is my secondary Switch, so he can play any games on my Switch because his account's a secondary account in there. And then I can also play the game at the same time because my secondary Switch still has my account on it. All I have to do is just connect to the internet for 30 seconds and we can both basically pay for one copy of the game and both play it at the same time. Now this isn't a big deal if it's a game that you don't mind, like you know, one person plays and then someone else plays it later. But if it's a game where you wanna play a lot you know, at the same time with someone else in your household, it does save money to take advantage of game sharing and buy the digital version so you can both play it at the same time. All right, I feel like I've showered enough praise on digital. Let's talk about physical games. The first thing, this is gonna be shocking. This is gonna blow your mind. A lot of people don't have good internet. Yes, you'll still have to download patches, but of course the patches are way smaller than the main game. A lot of games are like 30 to 50, sometimes approaching the 100 gig mark. So being able to install it from the disc, especially if your internet is really slow, even if you have to download patches, it's probably gonna save you a lot of time. There are certain exceptions, like for instance, the Xbox Series X has to be connected to the internet if you put an Xbox One game in there that happens to be cross-gen because the version that's on the disc is the Xbox One version and not the Series X version. So in that instance, it does make you connect to the internet. There's probably a few other weird exceptions like that, but for the most part, if you don't have good internet, installing from the disc is gonna be a lot faster. The next thing is prices. So I talked about this in the myth section when I said basically that physical games and digital games, usually they'll go on sale and they'll be the same price, but there's still advantages with price to buy a physical game. So I'm not gonna pretend that there's not. The one thing is, of course, used games. When I was younger, that was the only way that I would be able to get new games. I had to trade games in. So I can completely understand if you're in that situation where you need to trade games in to be able to get new games. Not everybody has money like that where they can just go out and buy new games all the time. Also, some people just play like annual franchises like Call of Duty, or they might play Madden or NBA where Essentially, they come out with a game every year and they just don't want last year's version, so they'll just trade it in towards a new one. Also, maybe you have a local game shop where you can get good prices on used games. If you want to support a local business or sometimes there are good deals on used games, then you do have those options when buying physical. There's also clearance, like sometimes if a game tanks hard enough, you could just find it for super cheap. For instance, I got Anthem for like $5 and no, it wasn't the best game, but you know what? I don't feel bad about buying it because it was five bucks for a physical copy. Well, technically it was a digital copy because it was a PC game. For some reason they had like an aluminum box that just had the digital code in there. I don't get why they even made that a thing, but technically it was physical because I bought it physical at a retailer store, so I'm gonna count that as physical. Another advantage to disc-based games are sharing. So I mentioned earlier how awesome the sharing is between consoles on the Switch. Both PlayStation and Xbox have a similar thing but it's still not as easy as just having a game and being like, hey, you wanna borrow this? You literally just give them the game. There's nothing that's easier than that and that's something you could do with physical games. Last thing I wanna talk about for physical games are just the collecting spirit. Some people just like collecting games. They like to have that collection. They like to get special editions of certain games, which there are some really awesome special editions. Like me personally, I still have the Halo Reach statue and my Halo 3 helmet from the collector's edition of those games. So there are definitely just some things that are really cool to have just as a collector if you enjoy collecting those type of things. So to summarize everything, I feel like digital games are better for that person that likes the convenience. They just want everything to be available on their system. Also, if you have multiple systems in the house, it's easier to share games between those two systems, like buy one copy and then both people play it. And then of course, for certain games, you get things like early access and midnight releases without having to go anywhere and you can preload the game. For physical games, you have slow internet connection. If you just value used games, like you really like buying used games, you like trading your games and saving some money that way, then yeah, physical games are definitely the way to go. Of course, some people just like collecting. And if you share a lot of games with friends, you can't really do that as easily with digital games. I also wanna say that there's no wrong choice. It depends on what you value. And it's not like because you buy physical games, you can't buy digital games or vice versa. I just kind of broke everything up because it's a comparison. But like if you have a system that plays physical games, of course, 
in most cases, you can also buy digital games. That's what I did last generation with the PS4 and the Xbox One. Over that generation, I discovered I really didn't like having physical games. I'd rather have the convenience of being able to launch the game whenever I wanted to. And a lot of the times the sales were so good in their online shops, I was like, I'd rather just buy the digital version and just be done with it. But also I definitely have my friends who like to share games. As soon as they're done with it, they'll let somebody else borrow it. And they have this whole system where they just trade games all the time. So buying a digital copy is not a good option for them. Either way, no matter what you prefer, you're not wrong. I think now is more prominent than ever because you have the Xbox and you have the PlayStation and the cheaper versions of those systems are digital only. So now people are kind of being forced to pick the, do I want to live in a digital only ecosystem? But I think some people are going to get caught up in do I want to spend the extra $100 for the PS5 disc version, the extra $200 to get the Series X because I don't want to be stuck with digital games. If you do have a PS4 or an Xbox One right now, just hop in the online shop every once in a while and see what the sale prices are like, see what game prices are like in general, and compare them to the physical versions. Like, are you willing to save that money to give up having physical games? What's important to you? That's the main thing. Like I said, there's no wrong answer. Do you want to spend more money on one of these systems to get a disk drive, or can you live without it? I think that's what it's gonna come down to for this generation, except for you switch people. Y'all get on my nerves, y'all are the worst. I'm gonna bring this video to a conclusion before the Nintendo people get mad at me. <laughs> but if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to tell a friend, tell a coworker, like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell notification to get notified when I drop a video. And always do at least two things at the same time.